Shady Cheryl's YouTube. Follow me on the gram. It goes by easier. I do lives and get to smoke weed. Anyways, though, you know you like this relationship crap, so let's get right into it, right? So first, you're going to go to AstroSeek. I have my own profile, but you would go to Birth Charts. You're going to put in your crap here. You're going to calculate the chart. Then you're going to get this fancy chart right here. And a couple things that I want you to write down. If you write it down, it goes by much easier. Two houses that we're gonna focus on on this video is the seventh house of relationship. This is your business relationship. This is your long-term relationship. The sign here describes the characteristics of your partners. And also in addition, the planets here tells you how many, excuse me, how many relationships, what other features your partners will bring. Another one is the fifth house of passion, falling in love, having sex is very important for this house because this is the house of love, fun, and boyfriends. And usually you're more with your boyfriends than you are with your husband. So let's just get right to it, right? So first of all, I want you to get used to looking at your Placidus chart again. I tell you that you can always change it on your extended setting. The house system is Placidus. We're gonna calculate it. Then I want you to get used to this legend over here. We're gonna only follow the modern traditional rulers. Eventually I'll teach you how to use the other ones. So what are the modern ones? Let's write it down. So if you have, the sun is a modern, uh, excuse me, a traditional planet, it rules Leo, the moon rules Cancer, Mercury rules Virgo and Gemini, Venus is Taurus and Libra, Mars is Scorpio and Aries, Jupiter is Sagittarius and Pisces and Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn and Aquarius and those are your 12 signs under the traditional rulers. So once you find out these topics over here, you're gonna go back and find the rulers, the planets that actually are assigned to this house, okay? So another legend part that I want you to get used to, in your Placidus system, you're gonna get these uh, numbers, which is the houses, uh, the house cusp from the first AC to the 12th, which if you didn't know what those are, is basically this, is, this black line starts your first house, and then all these little lines afterwards are known as your house cusp and they begin your cycle and they just basically tell you your social. Anyways, uh, we're gonna, on, on another topic, right? I want you to look for your DC. So it's literally gonna be the sign or the number right here is the degrees right next to your first house. So the first house is the self, your personality, your body. What is your Sims character? The DSC line descendant tells me about your partners and the people you're gonna end up being with. So for me, I have a seven degrees Capricorn seventh house. And then my fifth house technically, as you can see here, so that way when you look at yours, is my Placid, oh, okay. Is my Placidus fifth house, I have one Libra placement, Jupiter, and then I have everything else in Scorpio, which is Mars, Mercury, the Fortune, and Pluto. So my fifth house technically starts right here. So as you can see, is at 20 degrees Libra, okay? So I want you to write down my your fifth house cusp, but write it down, so whatever you got sign in there. So I'm gonna write down Libra, because that is the symbol of Libra in whatever degree it is in write that bitch down <laughs> and then you're gonna do the same thing for your seventh house which is capricorn that is the symbol of capricorn in my seventh house so if you don't know what those symbols are i not the one for you buddy anyways once you find that information you write it down i got a libra and i got a saturn excuse me capricorn again libra house cusp fifth house Capricorn seventh house cusp, okay? So that means that my Saturn rules the seventh house and Venus also has a ruler in my fifth house, technically. Okay, so um, then you're gonna go into your Google and you're gonna type in natal chart transit search astro seek because that is my favorite website and that is the website that I'm freaking using. So once you find that website, you're going to click on NATO Transit Online Search Engine. It's supposed to say NATO Transit Online Search Engine, and when you're gonna click it, it's gonna look like this. 
So you're gonna have your, again, your birthday information, and then I'm gonna show you how to use that. So here's the thing. Now, all these planets you see here, they actually have a timeline. Um, what do I mean by that? That means that ma these planets have to mature for you in order to see and reap the benefits of it. Okay, so I'm going to show you what are the numbers, and I think I've shown it on my TikTok, but I'm going to show you anyways, hang on. And I want you to take a screenshot and we're gonna talk more about it. That does not mean you are not going to meet someone eventually, okay? So don't be like, oh my God, I'm gonna wait till 36 years old to meet someone, you know. So let's see. And I'm gonna get that right about now. Hang on. And here we go. Okay, which is this? Let's see how that looks. Okay, so I want you to take notes. We got, so what does that mean? So once you find your fifth house and your sixth, uh, your seventh house, excuse me, the fifth house, house cusp and the seventh house cusp, you're gonna find them traditional rulers that I want you to look at. And if you have these symbols in there, we're also gonna look at that because they also kind of play a part of, into this. Um, so don't worry about that. What are the, so what are Rahu and Ketu? It's these upside down. It looks like a U or an upside down true religion sign, whatever the fuck you want to call it. If this is the head of the snake. This is the tail of the snake. So back to what we were going through. So for instance, this basically is saying for those that have a Saturn cusp, that means that Saturn is going to mature when you're 36. So for me, that I'm gonna get that means that Saturn is trying to teach me things in the house of relationships. The older that I get, the more shit that I'm gonna learn about relationships. But my Venus is activating my fifth house, so bitch, I'm gonna be outside. Venus is at 25 years old, brings us busy, busy energy. Um, and we're gonna come, we're gonna talk about that as well. So I want you to take a screenshot of that, save that along. Now that you got that out the way, let's move along from there. Another thing is, so like I said, if you have symbols in here, so these are the outer planets. This is Uranus, as you can see, and this is my Neptune, as you can see. Okay, sorry. Um, and um, again, we got Mars, right? I got, excuse me, sorry. So the, we have Uranus and Neptune in the seventh house. So those are outer planets. I don't want to work with those just yet. But when I look at my fifth house, I have Jupiter, which means that I'm definitely, Jupiter being in my house, that means that I may find someone at 16 years old, which is true, actually. I actually met someone at 15 years old. He was a shit. Um, he taught me a lot of lessons. Saturn, my 22 degrees is uh, a Saturn, 22 degrees is a Saturn ruled uh, degree, is over my Jupiter, learned a lot from the kid. Anyways, so Mars is also here, which means I would also meet someone at 28 years old or experience some changes in relationship or the house of love at the age of 28. Uh, we also have Mercury in here. You can also use Mercury. I forgot Mercury's age. Let's go look. Mercury is at 32 years old. So those are like timings that you can use and see and evaluate about that, okay? So let's say you met other people in another time and you're trying to figure out what that's about. So we're gonna go here now. So I have my information in here, I got a birthday, my time of birth, the location, right? I'm gonna put, uh, you're gonna see transit aspects to NATO. So what I wanna do is I wanna do my natal fifth house because like I said, my seventh house is ruled by Capricorn. Um, so when you have a Capricorn ruled house where there is Aquarius, which we're gonna talk about, or where there is Capricorn, you can use planets like Jupiter and um, to kind of help you see um, when you like meet someone interesting or special, okay? So also you want to do when you started dating, like I was born 93, so I wasn't dating then. So I'm just going to put from like 2011 when I, once I graduated high school, because I really don't want to talk about my high school sweetheart for what, but maybe I'll probably check it. So let's actually go to 2009. Let's go to 2009. And then I'm going to do fifth house, right? Conjoined. So this aspect is at zero degrees. I want to know the exact time this happened. That's what basically it means. 
So first of all, my fifth house is ruled by Venus. So I'm gonna actually check Venus transits. So let's click Venus. I'm gonna calculate it. Um, you're gonna get these handy dandies every year. So every Ven Venus transits happen like every year. Um, so that's that doesn't mean every year you're gonna meet someone, but the fifth house is also rulings like like your intelligence, your hobby. So you, this kind of shows what you are doing for fun for the rest of the year. So you could check Venus out, but I feel like since Venus trances are so uh, common, I don't want to use Venus because if you notice my fifth house, the players are actually Mars and Jupiter, but Jupiter only trances like once every 12 years. Now Mars is every two years, uh, which is kind of easier to check and it's, it kind of gives you a better span of things than using Venus or Mercury. Now, if you want to do Venus, you can see that and it takes you a little bit longer, but I would say use another planet in here, but I'm just going to use it for now. So you can see what I mean. So basically, I met a boyfriend or whatever. I kind of met him 2010. So let's look at the year before. So let's see what that looks like. So, and he, it's funny because he's actually a cancer rider. So when you look at this chart, right, you're gonna get a chart. You're gonna get a chart. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna show your birth chart, which is your birthday. Look at it up here, and it's gonna tell you the transit chart of that time when Venus conjoined your fifth cusp. So basically what this is showing you is when Venus conjoined that fifth house. So for instance, that means when Venus traveled around and shit like that, and it landed right here, which will activate your fifth house. So back to that chart, right? Um, like I said, Venus is our main activator. So these outer orange planets are the transiting planets. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> I know it does. So, for instance, when I look at this chart, I want to get straight to the hitters. So I'm going to look at the fifth house right here, at the fifth house, and then I'm going to look at my seventh house. So it can kind of give me details. Again, when you get better at this, you also want to look at the opposing house. So the seventh house is opposed by the first house right here. And then the fifth house is opposed by the 11th house all the time, forever and ever and ever. So I met him in school. This is my high school sweetheart. I met him in fucking school. Um, he was actually, the older I get, I realize he's actually a cancer rising, which makes sense because I'm a cancer rising. Um, he was black. He was Nigerian. He was actually from a different country. He was like Nigerian, actually. He was Jupiter conjoined Neptune. He's actually, literally, he was literally from Nigeria. Like he was didn't have his papers type things, right? And it's interesting because I see that uh, Venus is like right over that Jupiter in 20 degrees. It's in my first house with Saturn. And now that I think about that relationship, like he actually, actually got pregnant. This is kind of my business, so I won't go into details, but I did get pregnant at high school. Uh, I did not keep it, but we'll talk about that another time. But I'm, this is for learning purposes. So, like, I didn't keep the child, you know, so I can tell you that. So that's why we have these interesting things in the fourth house or, like, right on this IC line. Um, and, again, this was a relationship that I met via a friend, actually. So my friend at the time was dating her boyfriend, and her boyfriend's friend was how I met him. Uh, so plus he was from school. And he really stroked my ego in a way because the son is in the second house. He used to write me poems. So I don't know if that makes sense. So anyways, I can show you really quickly what happened when I met him. Is this it? Let's remove that. Uh, yeah, this is him. We used to do sports together. Uh, yeah, I used to actually be in a management. I used to be like the, rest, like the wrestling manager in his... Thing, which is pretty interesting. So it was like a job, but it was, I didn't get paid for it. So it's funny that Mercury's in retrograde, but I would be with him all the time because I was the management of that team, if that makes sense. So I'm, again, I'm looking at the fifth house. Again, Mars and Saturn in here, two malefics. That means there were lessons in love. Girl, Mars in this case is the ruler of my 
10th house of friends and out at like extracurricular activities, the 11th house. Like I actually was in sports. Like I had baseball. I had to do soft, like basketball and other crap that I forgot what I did at the time. But that just makes sense why the fifth house is kind of heavy. And it's also like it aligned with our schedule. Like the sixth house is like our daily routine. And we were always together because we both had sports. And again, I did get pregnant. And it was not in keeping, but that's, you know, shh. Again, this is the, we used to break up constantly, by the way. So this is ruled by Jupiter because the descendant is falling in Sag, which is in the 11th house. And yeah, that was a lot of hectic shit. So I kind of dated him for a while. Not that I was looking at other people, but like people within the team and shit like that. But anyways, let's do Mars because I have a stronger Mars. And like I said, Mars has an easier transit to read. So you could calculate Mars and I'm gonna do that. And let's see, it got, we got 2010, we got 2012. I met another guy once I graduated high school in 2011. I met another guy 2012, actually in the end of August. So I think it was like September, August going into September. So this is the second guy. It's a girl. Don't make me go in there, bitch. Okay, let's see. So again, we're looking for the fifth house. So we go like this. So this is our fifth house right here which I have no, I got the Saturn and Rahu, uh, which means the, this relationship was a little bit intense and it affected a lot of outside people. Like we got in trouble with the school, with friends. We, I got kicked out of college, like the dorms, it was a lot. Cause Saturn rules like foundations and structures and the North Node is like this wild car Rahu energy. Um, we didn't, it's funny because now he is a sick man. He's like sickly and this kind of rules sickness, so it's kind of interesting about that. Uh, again, this relationship was kind of toxic. It was very controlling of my daily routine. He was very controlling, actually. Again, he boosted my confidence. This is interesting when you have, like, it's interesting that that's the second time I meet a man and I have Sun and Mercury in here. He was a Gemini rising as well, which is fucking interesting. Again, if, so this is my seventh house is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn is in the fifth. And then we have, like I said, I already told you what that was about. And then Saturn is really in Libra in this case. And Libra is ruled by Venus, which is in the 12th house. So again, it kind of started off like a secret relationship. And eventually, you know what's interesting? Me and him, he was the first man that I actually lived with. So it's funny that Jupiter and the moon is right above each other. Me and him lived together. We got an apartment together. So that's pretty interesting. And it was kind of like, like I said, a secret relationship because he was kind of crazy, which is the 12th house. And yeah, we don't have to go into them details, girl. So let's see, um, a couple of years after that, we obviously shit hit the fan in our relationship, of course. This year, I kind of switched jobs that year, which is interesting. Yeah, I have Uranus in the sixth house. My jobs were different. There were some karmic things that I did in the relationship, I, like Uranus. Like these kind of places in the sixth house kind of brings up cheating or things being done behind the scenes, as well as the 12th house. But there's nothing in the 12th house, even though it's ruled by Virgo, which is Mercury in the fourth house. Like I said, at that time, me and him were actually living together. There were some like Uranus rules friends. There was some beef with friends and things that were happening behind the scenes. We're not gonna go into those details. Anyways, Mars is the ruler of the seventh house. Like I said, I was actually a security guard that year. And that year he was actually very physical. So we're not gonna go into them details, but you know what that means. Whenever Mars and being, oh, Mars and the moon are like close together, uh, expect things, especially if the moon is the ruler of your body, or you always want to look at what's going on to the the ruler of your body. You can kind of see some things on that shit anyways. So yeah, so again, let's look at this fifth house. In the fifth house, again, all we did like is Neptune in there, which is funny because he lied a lot about money. He was a gambler. Neptune is in the fifth house. Um, and uh, da, 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 da. let's see, Saturn is also the ruler of this, and Saturn is in the second house, and we used to argue so much about money. 
around this time. Yes, sir. Yes, we fucking did. <laughs> uh, let's see. That is funny because that's only happened in the beginning. So I actually got that job. It's funny because it actually did happen in the beginning. We had, uh, what? This is Mars? Interesting. Mars was busy that year. It's, yeah, because actually, that's interesting because I actually quit a job and Mars is the ruler of my hobbies. I quit a job. I started a new job, which was a job that I kind of kept for a while, all the way to 2017. So that's pretty interesting. And I started that job sometime after July. Yeah. At the time. Oh, which is funny because I had placements. I had Saturn in the second house and the other one. And that was a food job. Second house is like food delivery. And I was kind of running low on money there. That makes sense. And I had to ask my dad. And I don't like asking him, which is interesting because I had I have ninth house and second house placements. But I'm just reliving my life here, y'all. Sorry about that. Anyways, again, there was like sneaky shit that was happening with friends. Like I would just hang out with my friends or go talk to his friends. We're going to talk about that, girl. Um, like I said, he was still living in the house. This is the moon. And then, I, like I said, I had, like, a, a new job. So I was always, like, I had new sets of friends and new sets of people that I was talking to, which he obviously did not like, but I don't care. Anyways, so we got the fifth house is here, which is the fifth house is the ruler of love and is in the sixth house. Like I said, we were always constantly arguing about money and what I was doing all the fucking time. Um, I think, I didn't, at this point, I just stopped giving a fuck about that relationship. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I think, I, what the fuck happened? Am I, is that when I met someone else? I was sure looking, I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, oh, you know what? I No, actually, that wasn't even that time. So it was like before that. So what the fuck happened? I guess he left and he came back. I can't remember. I'm sorry, y'all. I can't remember. Anyways, so that was kind of far back. But I remember, so 2015, I didn't do anything. But I guess that, is that when I did this shit? Let's see. Ooh, look at that house. The second house. I was getting more money, bitch. I think I got a car. No, I didn't. I got the car in 2017. But you know what? The tr Let me see what the next transit is. 2017. I already had the car. So you see, from 2015 all the way to 2017, Mars is basically reading that entire timeline, if that makes sense to you. So I got my car in October of 2017, so it would be under this transit of Mars. I hope that makes sense for people. And that's like, I see, that's me acquiring a large assets and saving money. I was working like three jobs at the time. That's a fact. I was doing Uber, and I was working for the state of New York because of my uncle, so that's pretty interesting because Mars is in the ninth house, and Mercury, and I left that, yeah. Kind of left that job and came back to it. It was an engineering job. I'm retarded. Don't ask me, y'all. Anyways, we're going to keep this short, but I'm going to show you another thing that happened. So that was 2017. I met someone else at work for sure, but I had to keep that secret. I was always, yeah, so Moon, see, that was another person that I had met at work. Another person is on my ex. We ain't gonna talk about that, y'all. But I was dating that person for a little bit. and But I was still talking to my ex at the same time. So we have Saturn in here. He came back around. Uh, oh, and I had moved to Cali. Yes. So I have, this is when, by 2017, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was getting ready to move with my ex, my ex came back, so my ex is, Saturn is in Sagittarius, my ex is a Sagittarius, Jupiter is in Scorpio in that fourth house with Venus and the sun, so that makes sense. I literally drove across the country, so around that time. Yes, sir. Yes, because I was, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened because I come back and I get a job. And I get a job at this like food place too, but I was security. Sorry, it, just because it correlates with each other. Again, we're looking at the fifth house, so I was like Lilith, I had a mistress. Lilith rules mistress or having two people, I ain't gonna lie to you. So I had two people. Girl, I'm, don't ask me, you wanted to get in my business. 
2019, I'm not dating anyone, thank God, because I need the break. Anyways, but 2019 brings in what 2020 is in. So this 2019 is when I actually started doing Instagram stuff, social media. Shout out to me, been in the game for a little bit. Shout out to me. So it's funny because I have Uranus and the fortune in the third house of social media. Rahu is in that sixth house of service. Again, is in that ninth house, me executing something that I learned. It's like in a business house. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, pretty much. And then 2020, yeah. So this is like, I wasn't really even paying attention to men at that time. No, I started dating the tattoo artist. Aha, that's hilarious. I forgot about that asshole, which is going back to 2017. So from 2017 to 2019, I actually dated someone who was a tattoo artist. And he was an Aquarius, so it's funny. And I, we actually felt very familiar to each other. So I have K2 in there. He was definitely karmic. That didn't last that long. <laughs> um, I think I went homeless at that time, too, which is funny that we have Jupiter and Venus in there because I was staying with my uncle and grandma, but I kept leaving the house and shit like that, which is Mars. I basically lived out of my car around that time, so it's interesting that Mars is the ruler of the fourth house. And Lilith and Saturn in here, uh, that's when I started coming up with the theory of, like, maybe I should just work for myself. And Pluto and the moon is together. Yeah, because I was always spending time with the Aquarius, um, and I learned a lot from him in that sense. I hope this is making sense. I'm going to save it here. Maybe I'll do a part two of this. Tell me what you think about that. Lastly, I mean, this is 2021, uh, but then I started meeting. You will never find. Bow, 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 bow. And I had like a physical transformation, which is cool because this is literally right there. Uh, and then Saturn is the moon. I was dating someone in the secret, but that was like a relationship, Mercury and the sun, is that it? And the 10th, yeah, I was dating someone from work, 26 degrees, that's so cool, because it's literally the same degree that I was looking for for the longest. Sorry, I'm talking to myself, y'all. And then I was, then I broke up with this, that asshole. This is the work, so I broke up with my boyfriend from work that I had another one. G listen, y'all, I'm moving, I'm moving along to why the fuck this shit happened. And now I'm in this timeline right now uh, till all the way to 2023. So we're, I'm literally here all the way to 2023. So for instance, like I do a lot of social media stuff. God, Mercury's retrograde. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> um, let's see, I do a lot of recording myself. Thank God it's not a baby. And then Jupiter rules this fifth house, and Jupiter's in the 20, 22nd degree of Saturn. I went back, not that I went back to an old karmic lover, but he's always around. That motherfucker never leaves. And he is going through some major changes, and I could see it so clear as day. Um, but I am, like I said, I'm, I literally teach people astrology online, which is Jupiter. You feel me? And I'm constantly reading people, want like daily. And this, I'm always in my business. So the moon is in here. I mean, I didn't gain weight, thank God, but I did change my look a lot. So thank God for it being Saturn. Uh, like for instance, I work two jobs, so that's pretty interesting. And Mercury, where's Mercury? So fifth house is back to here, which is Jupiter's there. Saturn is in the sixth house. Mercury ruled Saturn. And my Mercury's in retrograde, which is funny because that all of them are fucking Gemini's. <laughs> oh, great, that's fun. So this is kind of coinciding to me getting a home. So by the time I turn, by the time I go to the next transit, which is 2023, I'm gonna have my own place, obviously, thank God. And I have literally the reason I know this is because the way that the IC is like literally in the stars. So my IC is at zero degrees, which I find interesting. And um, this is the stuff that's happening. This is the mother's home. So I'm pretty sure I'm leaving my mother's home. Thank God. And I have K2 there. So that's interesting, which I will be living in somewhere that I've lived in the past. Maybe, yeah, because I still live in New York. So that makes sense. 
So yeah, I know it's something about a living situation for a fact, and my grandmother is going through some changes too. This positive changes. Uh, yeah, that's my tea, guys, for right now. That's all I got for you. We'll come back. I'll do a part two if you need it. <laughs>